Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I have formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Let us pray. Divine Spirit, we pray that your spirit will continue to be present here among us and that your words will be spoken through this, your servant. Amen. Now, I've been honored in recent years to sit in some spaces with North Carolina Poet Laureate Kathy Smith Bowers. Now, Kathy helps train people who provide spiritual direction. It's one of the people who helped train me, and as I'm a mentor in, in that program now, I get to work with her and help and train others. And she always focuses on a key component, something she calls an abiding image. An abiding image. Now, an abiding image is something that has deep meaning for us. Either something we have seen in real life or something we've envisioned in our mind, something perhaps we've dreamt about. An abiding image is something in which we glimpse the divine. Such an image inspires us provides hope or comfort or peace or leads us along a different place on our journeys. Now there's an old hymn that I remember singing as a little girl called Abide With Me. Y'all remember that. When we think about that word, abiding is something that remains supporting us in all the most important ways. An abiding image does just that, something in which we glimpse the divine that remains with us. Just last night, I uh, was doing a wedding for a couple and as I was heading out, one of their guests had kind of gone to the side, an older man, and he was smoking a pipe. Now, I've not been around anyone smoking a pipe in a number of years. Of course, most of us were not around many people for a couple of years either, <laughs> right? So, uh, my grandfather, who I've mentioned to y'all before, who was a minister, always smoked a pipe. And so, I stopped and spoke to this man and told, thanked him for that and that it just brought back my papa to me. Someone who showed me unconditional love and support. And that's an abiding image for me. Now, today's text that we have from Isaiah is filled with abiding images. Now, this passage from Isaiah was created when the Hebrew people were in exile from the, in the Babylonian Empire, close to 2,000 miles from their homeland. People had died in exile. Children had been born never knowing the land of their family. 
the Hebrew people cried out these words that we read in the Psalms. We sat and cried by the rivers of Babylon. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now this passage from Isaiah today remembers the great things that God has done for God's people. It has the image, the abiding image of making a path in the sea. That story we know so well, leading the enslaved Hebrews out of Egypt to freedom. And yet this passage from Isaiah has a critical turning point. Now, it begins with the abiding image of remembering what God has done of old, especially with the Exodus story. And then this is written. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, if we remain stuck in the old images, just remembering the good old days, we won't be able to see the new images, to envision the new thing that God is doing we won't be able to see the river in the desert. Now, when I was in high school, I had a routine on Sunday mornings. That was back in ancient times. I'm sure most of us remember when we had clock radios. Do you remember those? I'm turning the dial here. David may have no clue what I'm talking about, right? But, you know, it's those were the things. It's like, I don't know what you're doing, Amy. Yeah. So uh, I would get up Sunday mornings with my clock radio where I set my alarm, and I would turn the dial to this FM radio station. There was a local Asheville station that played a program every Sunday morning called Streams in the Desert. Now they would play light jazz interspersed with inspirational readings. Now it was years later when I was in divinity school when I realized the title of that show came from the book of Isaiah. And then I even realized as I was doing some of my Hebrew studies that a better translation was actually Rivers in the Desert. Now let's think of a dry desert. Water is a precious commodity and a few drops can mean life or death. And then let's imagine a gushing river pouring forth. It not only provides water for existence, it totally changes the landscape in ways we cannot even imagine. If we only hold on to the things of old, even if they were really good things, we don't allow space for God to create something new. Now I know in this world today that all of us are filled to the brim right? <laughs> Life is a lot, to say the very least. And yet, abiding images surround us. They are filled with beauty, offering a new path. Now, there's a favorite uh, piece of poetry I have, and I probably have shared it with you before, because it is one of my favorites. And it's filled with abiding images. It's from Elizabeth Barrett Browning wrote these words. Earth's crammed with heaven, and every common bush a fire with God. Only he who sees takes off his shoes. 
The rest sit round and pluck blackberries. Let's open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to the new thing God is doing for us as individuals and as a collective group. Now, if we've learned anything the past two years, and of course that's a phrase we keep saying a lot, right? If I've learned anything the past two years. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that we've learned is that it's time for something new, individually and collectively. Significant numbers of people are leaving jobs where they are not valued. Understanding that life is too short to spend most of our time in meaningless ways. Pictures of people immersed in war zones around the world reveal moments of beauty and love and hope. And as some people in our society succumb to fear and hate, more and more people are opening their minds and hearts to the beauty of the diversity of this world that God has created. A beautiful river is bursting forth in the desert. God is doing a new thing. Now, I know that some days are just too much. We all know that, right? Trusting in the abiding images God sends and God offers does not mean blind hopefulness. It's not saying, oh, everything's going to be all right in some kind of superficial way. It is trusting the image with our eyes wide open, wide open to the world around us. It's about commitment to that which waters us. It is about believing in hope with our hearts and our minds and our bodies. It is about being the water and creating a world where water flows for all. Now today, we know the river is flowing. Let it nourish, inspire, and fill us as we journey with God in creating a new thing in our own lives and in our world. Amen.